There are some fires, obviously, in uh, the city of San Francisco. Again, as we take a look at that, uh, that appears to be what uh, would be the Marina District. The entire upper deck of the Cypress structure, that is the section of highway that connects the Bay Bridge to the Nimitz Highway 880, it just seemed to collapse during the shaker. Uh, you can see those ripples in the road. I'm guessing, but what I am afraid of, and what's, what we, the information we seem to be getting seems to confirm this, that those ripples in small part are caused by vehicles trapped underneath. Uh, we have no idea how many vehicles were trapped underneath. If you could see how violent that shaking must have been. Because of our power outages and wire services are not coming in with other reports? Well, we're told uh, that uh, this earthquake today was measured at between 6.5 and 7 on the Richter scale. Power failure, therefore the game will be postponed. We ask that you hold on to We have been told that there has been some uh, dramatic rescues in the area. This is what you're looking at right now, the cypress structure. People have risked their lives to crawl up under that those two compact pieces of highway to find survivors, and they have brought people out alive. We were told that this person in here now that they're going for, and we don't know if this is a family or if this is one person, but we are told that there is someone alive right here. We will keep you uh, in touch with what's going on, and we'll let you know, of course, if they are able to pull this person out of here alive, and we'll let you know if we get any firm figures on anything. At this point, we have not been able to. All right, Leslie, we'll be coming back with you as soon as you have some more information for us. Thank you very much for that live report. That was Leslie Griffith reporting live. We are getting report now. At least 50 people are dead tonight because of this earthquake. Highland is without normal power, operating on emergency generators. Some say it looks like a MASH unit is operating there in the parking lot. The other hospitals report that they are fully operational and fully staffed. Some say the quake happened during a major shift change and that uh, helped quite a bit. We haven't talked at all yet about Candlestick Park and of course that was going to be the big story tonight. The third game of the World Series. Well, at Candlestick Park today, everyone was in place. The players were on the field, and of course, the earthquake hit at 5.04. Many of the people in the stands at first thought it was funny, a, a normal earthquake that we have. It rolls a little and jolts a little, and that's it. Well, then they realized how serious it was. Some people say that there was one section that actually uh, opened up about six inches, and they could see the parking lot. Uh, there was a report that 8 to 10 inch cracks were reported throughout the upper deck section of the ballpark. Extensive damage to section 51, if you're familiar with Candlestick. And within two days, Caltrans predicts that they will have the Bay Bridge opened. Uh, but you saw the extent of the damage there, and as Dennis and I have been bringing you that information throughout the evening, uh, it, it may not. Uh, be taken care of in two days. Uh, we won't know yet, but Caltrans says they're going to try to put up a temporary steel girder where you saw the collapse, the top part of the Bay Bridge collapse onto the bottom part, and they're going to try to put a temporary steel girder to uh, make cars uh, pass. They think they'll be able to do that in two days, and um, we don't know at this point if that will actually occur. Okay, quick note from BART. Uh, we're told now that the only line running uh, on, BART, on the BART system is uh, from Oakland to Concord. The rest of the BART system is shut down tonight. Uh, offering. Andreas fault system in the Santa Cruz Mountains, about 10 miles northeast of Santa Cruz and 20 miles south of San Jose. The Berkeley magnitude is 7 on the Richter scale. There have also been a number of aftershocks, one of which is about magnitude 5 on the Richter scale. Those aftershocks uh, hit, uh, as I recall, they were about 10 minutes apart. So the the, the biggest one was about a half hour. And that was how big? Uh, approximately magnitude 5. We have uh, not had time to go through and determine the magnitude of all the aftershocks that we've been recording up to in the last few hours here. The aftershocks are scattering over about a 30-mile range of the San Andreas Fault System, uh, roughly north and south of Lake Ellsman, where the earthquakes, uh, 295 earthquakes, occurred in the last couple of years in that area. This uh, earthquake, is this, uh, people are going to say, is this the big one? Is this the uh, area of the San Andreas that uh, well, we might have expected that? It's a major earthquake, and it's one of the two areas in the Bay, two fault segments in the Bay Area where the potential is very high for an earthquake in the magnitude 7 range. Uh, the first one was the one where the earthquake occurred this evening, and the second one is the northern segment of the Hayward Fault Zone here in the East Bay. 
We were getting reports of major damage in Hollister. How does one explain that, given the epicenter we're talking yeah, about? Well, when you have an earthquake at the magnitude 7 level, or anything over about 6.5, you'll get widespread damage over easily a radius of uh, 50 miles. And Hollister is less than 50 miles away from the Santa Cruz Mountain epicenter region. Well, in terms of the iffy science of prediction, were, were you getting, uh, you, I know you monitor the daily operations. And just a reminder, President Bush was immediately advised of the situation out here in the Bay Area of the earthquake, and he immediately dispatched an Air Force plane to Frankfurt, Germany, to uh, pick up Governor Duke Majin. That's where he was at the time the earthquake hit. And when the earthquake hit in the newsroom, I have to say, I have never experienced one that a quake knocks you off your feet. I, I was knocked against some cabinets, and a cameraman actually tackled me to the ground because things were just falling out of cabinets, and tapes were falling down. And cabinets were falling over. Yeah. Exactly. Dennis, you were on the second floor, right? I was on the second floor um, buying a candy bar. <laughs> and uh, uh, <laughs> the building started, uh, when it started shaking, I saw oh, another earthquake. And then uh, my feet almost came off from under me. You know, we've all been through this before, mm -hmm. but, you know, and for a moment I thought, this mm -hmm. is it. You know, I started looking I around. I, I totally expected the building to just come straight down, and, and that, that was it. I ended up holding on to the candy machine. <laughs> to, uh, to Which wound from... up three feet from where it started. Yeah. Oh, we both danced across the floor. It was in the newsroom. It, it was interesting. You won't find a cooler, uh, perhaps in a, in a way more cynical group than than mm -hmm. news people. News people have seen it all, uh, whether people have it. And I was absolutely petrified, holding on to my area, and I was watching uh, the news people, the journalists, and uh, various expressions uh, across the face. None of them panic. I noticed, though, I was the only well, one. We don't have time to panic. You don't have time to panic. You were you you were already starting to. I was going to say starting to write. The fact is that. Our anchors tonight have been speaking extemporaneously from notes for several hours now, a feat that, if you stop and think about it, is almost in incredible. You know, one element that could have made this tragic day even worse would have been uh, foul weather. Uh, rain, for example, would have made the rescue efforts much more difficult. Uh, thankfully, it was a nice day. It was a warm day uh, and a sunny day. And tonight around the greater Bay Area, there's still that three- or four-day-old four her now with some updated information. Faith? Dennis and Elaine, there is a lot of information about what is operating and what is not in the Bay Area, what is closed and what is open. We've tried to compile it in an orderly form to try to keep you up to date. First, the schools. We have listed them county by county. These are the school districts that are closed in Alameda County that you see on your screen. Now in San Francisco, the list is by individual schools. There are 10 elementary schools closed in the Marina District. The Marina Middle School is closed. There is no reopening date there. As far as high schools in San Francisco, all should be open tomorrow. Moving on to badly hit Santa Cruz County, all school districts are closed. In San Mateo County, those districts you see listed are closed. That is three school districts closed. In Santa Clara County, four school districts will be closed tomorrow. They're listed on your screen. And officials say the Loma Prieta School District is closed for their foreseeable future. There are a couple that are not listed on the screen that we got late. San Jose State University closed until Monday. Burnett School in Morgan Hill closed, opening unknown. Gateway School in Gilroy closed, unknown opening. And McAuliffe School in Cupertino, unknown opening. Now in San Benito County, the school closing information is very sketchy. We have listed the one closing that we have. Now to the school districts that are open. Again, they're listed by county. Contra Costa County, all schools open. That's the same for Marin County. In Monterey County, all are expected to be open, but check first with the individual school district. And in San Benito County, three school districts will be open, the ones that are listed. That's all the information we have on schools. Now to our public transportation system in the Bay Area. As you look at this ferry schedule, I'll tell you more about it. This is an emergency service being offered by the Red and White Fleet and the Blue and Gold Fleet. It leaves from Jack London Square behind Scott's Restaurant and it goes across the bay to San Francisco Ferry Building. The fare is $4. The three major airports in the Bay Area are all open and running. San Francisco International does have some reduced service. The North Terminal is closed because of earthquake damage. United, which operates out of that terminal, has a somewhat reduced schedule. You should call United. The rest of the airport operating normally. Oakland Airport is nearly fully operational. There was some damage to a runway. 
Airport officials say they cannot land the very big jumbo jets, but everything else is getting in and out just fine. And in San Jose, it is 100% operational that airport suffered no earthquake damage. BART had some very good news today. It has expanded its schedule. BART will now be operating from midnight to 6 a.m. It was not before. And BART has expanded its rush hour schedule to 8 p.m. ...for the elderly, and it has been badly damaged by the quake. About 80 of the 300 people living there have been forced to leave. They were in the southwest wing, which is now closed off totally because of the quake. There is obvious extensive damage to the exterior. Hundreds of bricks tumbled to the ground when the quake struck. But the true extent of the damage is unknown. Building inspectors were there this afternoon checking out the damage. Meanwhile, residents still there were getting by the best they could. Most of the building is pretty stable because uh, it was just that section over there that came down. All, uh, although it shook. Everything was on the floor. I had bookcases all over. I could, you know, no cracks in the wall, but everything was falling down. Every room was crashed. I lost oodles of dishes, expensive dishes, all kinds of stuff like that. They were kind of old people. Some of them had to be carried out. And, well, they took it real good. Then they feed us. They taking care of us good. Whoever the Red Cross really looking out for it, you know. The people still staying there are being fed by the Red Cross. The power is on, and we're told that most of those forced to leave the southwest wing are now staying with friends or relatives. In Menlo Park today, geologists at the U.S. Geological Survey said the quake was a magnitude 6.9, and it very probably hit the San Andreas Fault, although there is a slim possibility it hit a nearby offshoot of uh, another nearby fault. They also said it ruptured a 30-mile section of the fault. That does not make it the big one. The 1906 earthquake ruptured a 300-mile section of San Andreas Fault. Rita Williams has more on what the U.S. GS said today, and it was not very reassuring. It's hard to believe 30 seconds of shaking could do so much. And still, scientists say Tuesday's 6.9 earthquake has done nothing to prevent or delay the so-called big one. They say is certain to hit the Bay Area someday. There is a, uh, an even chance of another magnitude 7 or larger earthquake within the next 30-year period. And the most dangerous area for the next major earthquake, they say, is shown here in yellow. The Hayward Fault in the East Bay and this strip along the San Andreas Fault on the peninsula from Belmont to Santa Cruz. It's the first time the peninsula has been singled out. In the 1906 earthquake, it slipped a smaller amount than the part opposite San Francisco and to the north. And so we believe that it will rebuild uh, to the breaking point at a sooner date. It's the same prediction scientists at the U.S. Geological Survey made last year about the danger of a major earthquake on the San Andreas near Santa Cruz, exactly where Tuesday's quake hit. As for aftershocks, geologists say we'll feel them for months, but the likelihood of a large six or greater quake drops to about 1% tomorrow morning. Scientists say they've flown over and hiked over the epicenter of Tuesday's earthquake, looking for ruptures on the ground to match those below ground. They found nothing. That's unusual. Something else unusual about this earthquake, they say, is its depth. Usually quakes on the San Andreas start about eight miles below ground. Initial readings show this one started about 12 miles deep, and that, they say, may explain why damage was so great so far away. San Francisco is 50 miles away, but scientists say they were not surprised the heaviest damage in San Francisco occurred here in the Marina District, and secondly, south of Market. It's like the little pig who built his house with straw. In this case, the houses were built on sand, and the Big Bad Wolf was a 6.9 earthquake. We do know that the uh, Marina District uh, suffered liquefaction, the, uh, um, which, which is what happens to sand filled with water when it's shaken. If it's very loose, the sand essentially collapses, and so you're asking the water to support the, uh, the land surface. And so the buildings are essentially floating on a fluidized bed. It's quite clear that this happened in the Marina District. As for the East Bay damage, though, along the Cypress structure, scientists today said there's no geological explanation, meaning the reason for the devastation there is man-made, structural failure.
Scientists here say because of scarce funds right now, their studies for earthquake prediction are centered in Fairfield, midway between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Ideally, though, they say with more money, they would like to concentrate their efforts more on studying earthquake prediction in the increasingly seismic areas of Southern California and right here in the Bay Area. In Menlo Park, Rita Williams for the 10 o'clock news. If you were at Candlestick Park when that earthquake hit, you know that it really shook and swayed. And uh, because the damage is still being assessed, the 49ers will not be there this Sunday. Kind of uh, scene out here, let me tell you that. As far as the uh, Caltrans worker who fell off the, uh, the upper deck of this bridge of the uh, Cypress structure, uh, we don't know what his, uh, what his condition is. Uh, the police say that uh, they are still working on him, but we don't know uh, whether he is seriously injured or if he may be indeed a fatality here. Uh, this scene that you're seeing right now has been going on something over four hours just at this one location for one vehicle. There are more than two dozen vehicles that they plan to open up from uh, up above to try to see if there are any uh, survivors uh, still inside this uh, collapsed uh, concrete structure. Uh, one of the problems, of course, they're having is that this entire structure is very, very unstable. At the bottom of your picture now, you can see some dark vertical lines. Those are steel beams that they have placed underneath the uh, sagging concrete structure here. These beams are what are holding this entire several hundred ton structure up. As you can see, the reinforced concrete has just shattered all along here. The experts were telling us uh, all evening long that the, uh, that the structure is very unstable, that they have to uh, shore it up in order to have any kind of security for the uh, teams up on top. They are doing everything they can. They have four different uh, units working up there now, looking at four different sites as well as trying to extricate this trapped Caltrans worker about uh, six blocks from where we are. He, as I said earlier, he fell some 30 feet and landed upside down in his truck and was severely injured. Uh, right now, uh, the scene here has uh, uh, pretty much uh, deteriorated into, uh, into one of waiting. The hope that we had had early for uh, a number of survivors has pretty much dwindled. However, we have had some good news this evening that the number of people trapped inside here probably is a lot less than, uh, than, we, had, uh, than we had previously anticipated. They're saying now uh, many fewer vehicles were on here. Uh, we're going to see a camera change here as we change lenses. Uh, many fewer vehicles were on this deck at the time of the earthquake, 5.04 on Tuesday. Uh, for many, for a variety of reasons, but they're saying that there are probably fewer cars, and uh, probably quite few, quite a few, quite fewer um, victims here. However, one more thing, and I want to get this in quickly: the uh, police have updated their number of missing people here to 167. That's far greater than we had thought before. So uh, that discrepancy between the earlier 80 and the now 167 has not been fully explained. But we do have a lot more missing people in Oakland than before. Elaine Dennis. Okay, John, uh, we will check back with you a little later. Hopefully you'll have uh, better news uh, about that entire situation, including that worker who fell off of that uh, overpass. We're going to go now to, uh, to a break, and when we come back, uh, we have more information for you, uh, emergency information, and uh, Pat will be along with tell us a little bit about what to expect weather-wise. That could have an effect on this. We'll be right back. another month. That news came today when Caltrans engineers declared the section of roadway that collapsed on the bridge a total loss, and it'll have to be replaced. Craig Heaps is, in the, is on the bridge, in fact, with a live report. Craig? Terry, I'm standing right at the edge of that hole in the upper deck of the Bay Bridge where it collapsed a week ago during the earthquake. They've now removed that over the weekend, that 50-foot section, and they're also working on the lower deck now. The lower deck, as you know, was damaged when the upper deck collapsed onto it. They've cut half of the uh, lower deck away and removed it today. They're working on taking the other half out with a crane. Once they do that, they will rebuild those sections from scratch. As you said, they're not able to repair those. The good news about that is that will actually make the work go faster. Right now, they're projecting mid-November for reopening the bridge. 
It's kind of a strange sight to be up here on the bridge. There's absolutely no traffic, something I never thought I'd see since I've been in the Bay Area. The workmen have been doing their best to get all of this prepared so that in a month, when those new roadway sections are ready, they can put them right into place in the two holes. The hole that is in the upper deck, the hole that is in the lower deck, the roadways will actually not be laid into those until the framework is in place. It's the framework that they're rebuilding and will drop into the two holes. Then they'll pour concrete and asphalt in order to create the roadway once again on the Bay Bridge before they reopen it. There are two federal groups touring the Bay Area today to look at highway damage. One is a congressional committee. The other is from the Federal Highway Safety Administration. They're going to see what needs to be done in the Bay Area and what sort of federal money needs to be sent here. That's the latest from out here atop the Bay Bridge.